What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're continuing our series on learning to model in SketchUp over 30 days. So in today's video, we're gonna learn how to create some framing inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so framing is a little different because it requires a little bit of knowledge of like dimensional lumber and other things like that. We're not gonna get super in depth on this, but enough that you kind of understand how to use arrays and angles and other things like that. So first thing I pretty much always do is I rough out the size of whatever I'm trying to draw. So in this case, let's say that we're modeling something um, like a shed that's maybe 15 foot by 10 foot. So I'm just gonna draw a line in here, 15 feet, and then another one that's 10 feet. So something like that, we're gonna keep it pretty simple for this tutorial. And so the first thing I wanna do with this is I wanna make sure that I group it because otherwise um, what's gonna happen, and we're just gonna select it, right click and click on make group, is your geometry is going to intersect with this floor piece. I wanna keep the floor, which is why I'm making this a group. Um, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw it again. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle over top of this. So I'm gonna tap the F key and I'm gonna offset this in by whatever the thickness of my board would be. Well, in this case, the thickness of my board, assuming I was using uh, two by sixes, would be five and a half inches. So I'm just gonna offset that in five and a half, and I'm gonna delete this out. And so what I wanna do is I wanna push pull this up to the thickness of my boards, right? This board's gonna run around the perimeter and we're gonna nail into it. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna push pull this up an inch and a half. So that's gonna be kind of the size of my board. Now. Before we do anything else with this, what I wanna do is I wanna cut out the opening for my garage front. So I'm just gonna find the central point right here. And I'm gonna assume this is maybe going to be an overall opening that's going to be maybe seven feet wide. So that means I'm gonna draw a line three and a half feet this way. And then I'm just gonna draw a line three and a half feet this way, like this. And so what we're gonna do is notice how I've split this up. Well, that means I can push pull this down um, so that this material is removed like this because I'm assuming that I'm going to actually frame an opening around the front right here. So then I'm gonna take this whole thing and I'm just gonna make it a group. So I'm not gonna worry about making it a component or anything like that only because um, we're not going to be repeating this particular piece. So then what I need to do is I need to model out my framing. And so the framing is pretty easy. Um, you can do it with components, but you're just gonna model out one of your pieces of lumber. So in this case, I'm gonna assume this piece of lumber has a height of, uh, we'll say the whole thing is maybe, we'll say the whole thing to the top before we model our roof is maybe gonna have a height of like, let's call it eight feet. So once I do that, I can take that whole thing, I can right click on it and I can make it a component. And I'm just gonna call this two by six vertical right here. And so then we just have to make copies of it. And so to do that, we can use the move tool in copy mode. And remember that this allows us to create copies based on um, spacing right here. And so for this corner, cause I'm assuming these are probably going to be like 12 inches on center or something like that. I have not checked that spacing. So, um, so for what we're doing here, that's gonna work fine. Well, for this corner, that doesn't really matter because there's not a distance of 12 inches in here, right? So I'm just gonna make a copy right here. But then what I can do is I can tap the Q key to activate the rotate tool. And what I wanna do is I wanna tap the control key in order to put that in copy mode right here. So now I've got this piece right here, which I've created a copy of, and I can place it along this corner. And I'm not sure, I think you might put one more on the corner right here, just so you've got kind of a box. Um, I'm not really 100% sure on that one, but we're gonna go ahead and call it good. But now what I wanna do is I wanna do the same thing here where I wanna use the move tool in copy mode, tap the control key, and then I'm just gonna type in a value of 12 inches. That's going to create one copy at 12 inches right here. And then I can type in times and however many of these I want. So in this case, I typed in times 15, I probably want 14 right here. And so in this case, that works out pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and move this back just a bit so that it aligns with this corner. And that doesn't really matter because we're making the spacing less, right? So that means it's stronger, not weaker. But then I'm gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a copy right here. I'm gonna align that. I guess we can leave it right there. 
I'll use the move tool in copy mode to create this little box right here. And then we're just gonna do the same thing with our spacing. So move tool in copy mode, 12 inches times nine right here. So we've got nine of these. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my box in the corner. And again, if my framing is wrong, I apologize for that. You can use this method to really make the framing whatever you want it to be. But then you can just do the same thing. Rotate tool in copy mode. Move tool in copy mode. And then in this case, if you don't feel like figuring the corner out, again, what you can do is you can just take this whole corner because you can assume that the framing is going to be the same. You can use the move tool in copy mode over here. Scale it to negative one. So tap the S key to scale and then type in a value of negative one and then just move this back so that it aligns with this corner right here. So now you've got your basic side framing that's in here or your vertical framing. And so we're going to assume that we've got a bigger board right here. So maybe this is like a pair of two by eights or two by twelves sistered together. Um, we'll go ahead and let's say that it's a two by eight in this case. So I'm just going to do a seven and a half. One and a half right here. And I'm just going to push pull that across. I'm going to triple click on that and I'm going to make it a component and I'm going to call that two by eight header. And I'm just going to make another copy of it right here. And so now I'm just going to assume that I've got kind of a ridge or a top board running all the way around the outside here. Um, so I'm just going to draw a rectangle across the top, offset it in using the offset tool. And then I'm just going to push pull this up a little bit. So maybe an inch and a half like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and triple click on it and I'm gonna make that a component. And I'm just gonna call this two by six top board. And again, you might, and I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create another copy right here. But then what I wanna do is I just want to figure out the slope of my roof. And so most of the time what I do with the slope of my roof is I actually just draw out the slope. So in this case, right, I'm assuming this is gonna go six up for every 12 over, um, so a six to 12 like this. And then I use the protractor tool, which you can use both in the free and the pro version in order to draw a guide like this. So then I can kind of see where that's gonna go. And let's do that again, because it didn't leave a guide. There we go. And so then I can just draw a line up here. I can find that central point. Then I can draw a line down here like this. So now I know where my roof needs to go. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna draw a top board. And I might take these edges and put them in a group just so I don't have any merging going on. But then I'm just gonna draw this and I'm assuming it's gonna be a two by six. I'm gonna draw a line five and a half inches down, uh, 0.75 this way, 1.5 this way, just like this. I'm gonna erase those edges out and so then I can take this board and I can just push pull it back like this. So now I've got my top board that's going to run in here. And so we can go ahead and erase out these guides because we're not gonna use them anymore. But now we can come in here and we can model out our actual framing. And so there's a couple ways you can do this. Sometimes what I'll actually do is I'll just model out the board laying flat. So we'll just say this is five and a half inches by one and a half inches wide like this, and then I'm gonna push pull it across. I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna make it a component and we'll just call this rafter. And a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll actually take this and I'll rotate it up so that it intersects with the top of my board right here. And then I'll just double click in here, draw a line across. Then I'll just push pull this across right here. And now I've got this board that intersects with this other board right here. And so we can assume we've got a little bit of overhang. So I'm just gonna push pull this out another 12 inches like this. But then we can take the whole thing. We can use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy it across. And in this case, maybe our spacing is gonna be like 12 inches. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode or 16 inches. So I'm gonna type in a value of 16 times and the number of copies I wanna make. So maybe 10 or 11. 
like this. So now I've got these pieces in here. Well, I can use the move tool in copy mode again and create a copy across here. I can scale it to negative one. And I'm gonna move this back like this. So now these boards are aligned in here, just like this. And so the, then depending on how you wanna do this, you can come in here and you can model out your end board that runs along the outside here. And you might not even have one of these on this kind of a thing, but um, we'll go ahead and draw one anyway. So I'm just gonna push pull this out to a thickness of one and a half inches right here. And then I'm gonna triple click on it and I'm gonna make this a component. I'll just call this end board. And I'll do the same thing, right? Move tool in copy mode. And in this case, I'm just gonna take it and align it with this edge and rotate it instead of messing around with the scale tool. There we go, and we're good to go. So the only other thing that you might wanna do is you might wanna come in here and you might wanna model out um, if you have pieces filling in the ends here. So we could definitely do that. So we're just gonna find this central point right here. And this one just has a little bit of manual work involved. It's not too bad, but um, we do what we always do. So we rough out our board size. So inch and a half right here. And we're just gonna push pull this up to wherever we want it to go. For the central one, it's pretty easy, right? It can just uh, go in this middle point right here. And before we do that, let's make sure that we've actually grouped our ridge beam up here. So we're gonna make a group. But then I'm gonna push pull this up like this. For this one, I just want it to align. And in this case, I'm actually going to make this a group um, because each one of these is going to have to be a different size. So there's really no point to me using components quite yet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing where whatever my spacing is, like if I say 12 inches, I want to go ahead and create these times 10. That's way too many. There we go. Times four like this might work just fine. But now what we need to do is we need to take these boards and we need to intersect them with this object. And so there's a couple different ways that you could do that. So in this case, for example, because these are narrower than this front board or wider than this front board, um, probably what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double click in here. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line across here like this, and I'm gonna push pull it. And so notice what that does is that leaves me an extra bit of geometry in here. So it's kind of overlapping with the face. Well, all you have to do is just select this edge and move it down to align it right here and you're good to go. So, and in this case, we might assume that we're gonna have an extra rafter piece in here. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode, move that across so that it aligns with that object right here. And again, there may be other ways that you do this and that's fine. Um, but for this one, this is a pretty simple way in order to create pieces that actually run in here like this. And so in this case, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna select these five pieces. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode and copy them out, whoops, like this. And then again, I'm gonna use the scale tool. I'm gonna scale them to negative one. And then I'm gonna move them back. And so the reason that I picked up an extra copy of that middle one is so that I can align it with the central point right here. That does leave me with two pieces in this location. I'm just gonna hit the delete key in order to get rid of that. But then we're gonna take all of these pieces, we're gonna make them a component, and we're just gonna call these, we'll call these angled framing. And then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode, and I'm just gonna create a copy that aligns with the back of my shed right here. And we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup right here, real quick. So we'll just move this over so that it aligns with this edge. And we'll create a copy right here. We're gonna do the same thing on this back side. All right, so if you have any questions about anything we talked about, feel free to leave them down below. Also, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, I've got a lot of great stuff coming up in the next 60 days or so. So I'd love to have you along for the ride. Plus, that'll help me try to beat Aaron in our subscriber battle that we've got going on um, before base camp of this year. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.